social distancing and I appreciate that. I also know that I can only project so far. So I just wanna make sure everyone can hear me. We're good? Okay. Um, welcome to this time that we get to come together. I'm so grateful that we get to come together today. I'm glad that that worked out. Um, I'm on behalf of the family, thank all of you for coming out to this service in which we remember our friend and our brother, Art. We come to grieve together. Uh, we also come together to celebrate the hope that we have in the resurrection promised to us by our Lord. This is what the Apostle Peter tells us about that. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, never spoil, never fade, that is kept in heaven for you, that is kept in heaven for art. The God who gives us new life is present with us here, and he extends his peace to us. And when he does, it sounds like this. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Josh to come forward and lead a prayer. Grandpa never failed to start something with scripture. So here are these words from the Apostle Paul from the book of Romans, chapter 14. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant, Art, being raised with Christ, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Praying also, most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with those who mourn, especially grandma or mom or sister, Carol. Surround her with your love, that she may not be overwhelmed by his loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet these days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going uh, to open with song, My God, How Wonderful You Are. The music is in the program that you've been given. We're going to sing verses 1, verse 2, and verse 6.
this time I'll invite Amy forward to offer a eulogy. My dad loved so much. My dad loved the sunrise. Waking up in the morning full of life with the abundance of the day ahead. Egg, toast, hot water, out the door. Always a smile as he opened the door to walk outside, especially if the sun were just rising. He'd always say, isn't it beautiful? We may not have always shared his enthusiasm for the crack of dawn, but he had enough for all of us. My dad loved the sunset. The day was winding down, having done a good day's work, eaten mom's good food, read the Bible, washed and straightened everything, and on a good day, played a game of cards. He would always try to be in position to see the sun go down. And he would always say, isn't it beautiful? We may not have always been as attentive to the setting sun as he was, but he was always there to remind us to stop, take a moment of gratitude, a moment to see God's beauty before the day is done. Dad loved my mom, certainly her baking, <laughs> and especially a lemon meringue pie but her mothering, her ability to run the household, take care of all of us, push him to remember, it's not all work and no play, to go on vacations, to be on vacations. He was always so proud to be married to her, to have her as his partner. And he would always say, isn't she wonderful? reminding us to love and appreciate our dear mother a little more every day. Dad loved his children. Yes, he taught us to work like crazy. <laughs> but he also taught us that all work is important in fields, factories, schools, hospitals, businesses, and concert halls and helped us on our way to find the work that we could do with our full hearts and individual talents. He loved to play games with us, to work beside us, to talk on the phone, to eat, to travel. He loved to encourage us in faith, in work, in love, in life. And he would always remind us on every call that he loves us. Dad loved his grandkids. Oh boy, did he love them. So happy to see them play, compete, succeed, graduate, laugh, rest, and smile. Always with an encouraging word, many encouraging words, and real joy in his eyes just to see them come in the door. They were always special to him, whether they fe felt special on that day or not, ready with a hug and asking, how are you, kid? Ready to listen, ready to be there. Dad loved his neighbor. Dad took very literally Christ's words to love your neighbor, and to him, everyone was his neighbor. That included those he worked with, served with, and worshiped with, for sure. But it also included the disabled, the immigrant, the refugee, the diverse, the incarcerated, the poor, the aging, the grieving, and the infirm. He would visit the sick and the imprisoned, bring the disabled and disenfranchised into our home. He opened his door and his heart and taught us to be better. Dad loved his sleep. <laughs> 10 minutes on the floor, on a bench, on the sofa, and wake up 
feeling refreshed, saying, feels so good to have a nap. He thought he hated to fly, but we never knew why, as he went to sleep before takeoff and woke after landing. <laughs> but he also liked to rest. Sunday was the day of rest, a day to worship, eat together, be together, and revive. And he allowed us to rest, at least once the work was done, knowing he was there to support us. Dad loves his God. Everyone here knows that Dad loves God. He was always bold and full-hearted in that love, joyful. When he was in the hospital recently, I happened to read him Psalm 63. He was so thirsty there, and the psalm reads, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. We all who cared for him knew he was thirsty in his last days. But as much as water, he longed for more of God's presence in his life and in ours. And he died on this verse from the book of John, the story of Lazarus. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he be dead, shall live. And everyone that lives and believes in me shall not die forever. We know that dad has not died forever, but has gone to his father's house where his thirst is now quenched, his cup filled to overflowing. And we know that when we pass heaven's gates, after doing our best here to love our children and grandchildren and spouses and neighbors, once we have done our work and lived with gratitude, he will be there waiting for us with a smile, saying, how are you doing, kid? And we will be doing just fine, thinking of the life on earth and the new life in heaven. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? I was talking to Amy and Jamie about that, the John story. I said, leave it to Art to go out on the most theologically astute verse he could probably have picked. <laughs> um, there's, there's a part of me that's a little bit stunned still now to be talking about Art in the past tense. Um, you know, art, we all know this art was just this vibrant, encouraging, welcoming presence to everyone. Uh, I love that you raised, you know, how are you, kid? Because I can hear so clearly when you walk into a room, Art saying, how are you, sister? So clearly with his big smile. The last two years, Art served on council at Second as a shepherd elder. And we had a shepherd elders meeting on just this past Monday night and remarked that we were going to need three people now to replace Art <laughs> because of the work he did. Art loved people. He loved to serve. He loved to go where he was needed. He wanted to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. I told Art when I saw him about a week ago how grateful I was for him. It's really easy when you do church stuff, when you do ministry, to get bogged down in the details of doing church. And Art always reminded me of the why. 
Art loved God in a manner that was infectious. He delighted in nothing more than the gospel being shared. Because for Art, the gospel truly was good news. Art's favorite verse was Deuteronomy 33, verse 27a. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. This verse is part of a blessing that Moses gave to the people of Israel just before he died. So how fitting then that these are the words that art leaves with us. And these words, Moses' final words to the people, are a reminder to the people of who their God is. And their God, he says, is the one who has always existed, the one who will always exist, the one you can count on. He is your resting place, the one who is holding you secure, holding you in the very arms that are even holding back the danger. And for art and for us, that firm foundation, those secure arms are the arms of Christ outstretched on a cross, destroying death, destroying evil, welcoming sinners unto himself. In his death we have life. He will hold us fast. And so today we grieve, but we do so as those who have great hope. Hope that our is fully alive and vibrant in the presence of his faithful Savior. Hope that one day we too will experience that glory and hope that even as we grieve, even as we miss art, that Christ is holding us fast. Our God is our refuge and he holds us in his everlasting arms. Amy mentioned to me that when Art came home from the hospital, he and Carol would read scripture together. And they read Psalm 23 together with Carol starting each line and Art finishing, sharing in God's word together. And I can think of no better way to both honor Art and to glorify God than for us to do the same, to read God's word together, to read this psalm of comfort and hope. So we're going to read Psalm 23 together the way that Art and Carol read it together. Uh, again, you have this psalm printed in your liturgy. Yeah. I'm going to invite um, the women to read with me the non-bolded part. I'm going to invite the men to read with Noah on the bolded part. And where it's italicized, we'll read that all together. So we join our voices together as we imagine art and all the saints above adding their own voices to these words of deepest trust. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
Act to its close Ebbs out your life's little day Earth's joys grow dim Its glories pass away Change and decay Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. And morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. Do you pray with me? Holy God, by your creative power, you gave us the gift of life, and in your redeeming grace, you gave us new life in Jesus Christ. We commend art to your merciful keeping through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord, whose death saved us from sin and whose resurrection brings us eternal life. This we pray through Christ our Lord, and I invite you to join me in saying the words he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. join in singing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5 of Amazing Grace.
give the benediction in a moment after which I invite you to stay kind of where you are the family is going to gather uh, and watch the the casket be lowered so we ask that you just remain where you are they would love to spend some time talking with all of you afterwards so we do invite you to stay for that so friends receive the blessing of the God who loves you may God go before you to guide you May God go behind you to protect you. May God go beneath you to support you and beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid, but may the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit settle in among you and remain with you always. Do not be afraid, but go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.